Happy Friday, everyone! <laughs> Yay, happy Friday, and welcome to the, what are, what are we calling this, LDV Rocks? Yes, sure. I like that. Welcome to the LV, LDV Rocks podcast with Kelly and David. Woo! Do we have any news before we bring on our guest? Any, any news from the industry this week? Uh, I should have thought about that before I started the show. Uh, the only thing that I found that I thought was interesting, which I guess happened last Friday, is... Um, uh, the big news was that Randy Klein of Crestron has announced his retirement. Yes, I like, saw that's that. A, that's a pretty big thing, right? That is big. Yeah. Like everyone thought he would never retire, but he's retiring. Everything must come to an end. That's true. That's about all I got for big news. How about you? No, nothing, nothing too big on my end. I feel like uh, it's starting to become a reality for me that we're going to be going back to uh, trade shows pretty soon. Yeah, except for, They're have happening. you heard that, like, that California has shut down again? Yeah, they're wearing masks in, in, in LA. Because COVID uh, percentages have gone up 10% in the last week. Right? Oh, I wanted to be done with that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like we were being so good, I was wearing my mask, being so good. We're all going to be done with it, and now it's coming back. I know, it sucks. Well, you know what that means? more collaboration, more collaboration technology. And what do we use when we can't see each other in person? We see each other on what's in front of me right now, a display. Video, a display. <laughs> oh yeah, video, but where do we see video? On display. So with that, let's bring, out, bring in our guest, Richard Sharp. Richard, could you please introduce yourself to our, our many millions of viewers? <laughs> hey, welcome everybody, uh, happy to be here. It's a super cool, fun way to uh, start the weekend. I'm calling it officially the weekend has started now. Absolutely. I'm, uh, Richard Hutton. Um, I run the demand generation team for marketing um, for uh, Sharp NEC Display Solutions of America, based out of um, kind of sunny Downers Grove, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, in the burbs. In oh, that burbs. looks like that looks uh, a lot like Illinois yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Michigan behind us. Yeah, actually, I'm going to tell a really quick story. So, oh, no. um, yeah, this is this is this is my life. This is real. So, when I was applying for college, it was before I'm so old. It was before the internet. So you couldn't just go I Google. Remember you remember before the internet? <laughs> you couldn't just go to Google and say what college can I get into? These are my grades, or however they do right. it now. You had to like go to the library and get books and stuff and i was really confused what? by the whole process yeah it was it was hard to figure out you talked to your guidance counselor and your guidance counselor said you're not going to make it into that school you should try for this school and i was i was a little lost and confused so i had my my one of my best friends in high school his name is marcus tanti really okay. smart guy he was our salutatorian so we had like 600 kids in my graduating class he was the second best student and he was hey, really, oh, wait 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 you had 600 kids in your graduating class it was, yeah, it was a huge class. It was 500 and Man. something. It was a huge, huge class. It was, for some reason, it was, it was bigger than the four years before us and the four years after us. So just my, my group was a really big group. What and happened? 1,100 kids in my entire high school. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, we, I had 850 in my graduating class. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my God. But they were, I think it was most, they ended up building a high school in the town over after I graduated because I think they were just too poor. So they just shoved like five cities into one high school. Everything's bigger in America. Yes, it's yes. so true. Yes, in my high school, it was, it was a complex. It was huge. Huge. <laughs> um, so, so, okay, so I asked my friend Marcus for help, and he, and he looked at me thoughtfully, and he goes, you should apply to University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, University of Illinois. I'm like, oh, I've never heard of that, but I did some research, and it's an amazing school. It's got one of, like, one of the top law programs for non-Ivy League schools, Really good psychology program, and I was a psychology undergrad. You know, it's I'm like wow, it's and it's an unbelievable school. And I, one of the other schools I was looking at was University of Michigan. University of Michigan's tuition was twenty thousand dollars a year. University of Illinois was like two thousand dollars a year, and they were comparable. I'm like, this school is perfect for me. And they had a thing where if you live there for like six months, even as a student, you're a resident. You get resident tuition. It was almost free, and it was wow. it's amazing school, amazing professors, amazing facilities. Did I mean, you go there? So I went there and, and because I was a bad student, I spent six years there because I didn't <laughs> under, undeclared major for a couple of years. Well, two grand a year. Fine. Yeah, you know, I, I took I like yeah, my third year. I took I took a break year and, and just worked 
I worked at a hospital in town. I was trying to figure out what to do. So I, six years of my life was spent in, in Illinois, not Chicago, two hours south of Chicago. So farms, just cows everywhere, yeah, corn, yeah, corn yeah. and cows. Because my friend made that one comment, you should look at University yeah, of Illinois. Know. And yeah, but at least you don't have seventy million dollars in debt either. I didn't have. Well, I, I still, I still have debt from law school, but wow. I don't have debt from undergrad. So a few years after I had graduated, I met up with this friend again, and I said to him. And at this point, we had internet and everything. And I said to him, you know, <laughs> six years later, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm like, how did you know the perfect school for me? How did you do the research? How did you know? There's so many colleges in the United States. How did you find the one for me? And he says, well, you remember the movie Risky Business with Tom Cruise? Yeah. Yeah. So Tom Cruise was trying to get into Harvard. And at the end of the movie, the Harvard interviewer comes to his house and he's having this crazy party with drugs and hookers and everything like that. So he's like, and the Harvard guy is like, what's going on here? And he's like, oh, I want to get to Harvard. And it's like a total mess. So he walks out of the interview and his friend said, so how'd it go with the Harvard guy? And Tom Cruise goes, looks like I'm going to University of Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> and based on that line, my friend told me because I wasn't a good student. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I spent six years there. <laughs> because of a, a, a line from a Tom Cruise movie, and he's like, I didn't think you'd take me seriously. <laughs> That's awesome. That's my life. That's my life. Sorry, I just totally hijacked this stream. But last no. week, I tried to tell a story, and someone said, is your stream? If you want to tell a story, tell a story. So I'm running Why with not? It. Yeah. So anyway, Dude, nice to have a fellow Illinois-ian here. illinois -ian. Right. Yeah. Totally from here. You can tell by the accent, right? <laughs> yes. I, it sounds very native. <laughs> I just read this thing about, um, so, you know, there's a Chicago accent. Think uh, Dan Aykroyd in Blues Brothers or whatever, right? Um, yep. Yes. And how different it is from the rest of Illinois. And that is, there's and there's a connection between the Chicago accent and the sort of upstate, almost northeast uh, New England kind of accent. And that's because in the late 19th century, a lot of folks came to Chicago from like Rochester and Syracuse and Buffalo. Um, so yeah, Chicago accent, quite strong, very different than the rest of Illinois. And I mean, you get down to the bottom of the state because it's a kind of a skinny north-south state. And it's, you know, you get that little Kentucky twang in there and um, sounds a lot different. So are you... Are you in Chicago or outside of Chicago? Outside. Okay. Outside the burbs. Um, do you ever go into the city? Yeah, 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 yeah. My daughter lived there, uh, had an apartment quite close to the city. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're huge live music fans. And um, Dude, we're coming up there in a couple of weeks for Lollapalooza. No uh, way. Yeah. I'm so I'm jealous. Excited. I don't know any of the bands playing and it's like a lot of hip hop bands, which I don't know. Like apparently Lollapalooza took this twist and, and it's now mostly hip hop. I mean, it's a hundred thousand people, right? So that, that's a wide market you got to try and appeal to. Is Chance the rapper playing this year? Because he's a Chicago guy. I don't I, know. I actually I was should listening look. to some stuff the other week and I, I went, who is this? My wife. He's fantastic. He, it's awesome. It's he's really cool. so good. I saw him yeah. in concert and he was so awesome. Have you listened to his um, <clears throat> his previous band? No. Oh, I cannot remember the name of it. Um, I got to go. Another local right cat. I think Vince Staples is another local guy too. You're going to make me look up the lineup for Lollapalooza now. I'm super huge music. So both my wife and I are huge music, fan, uh, music fans. Uh, my wife not so much on big festivals, and I get it. it, it you know, yeah, it's a lot of humanity in one space. I I, I totally get that. Um, I dra um, not dragged her. We went to. Coachella in like 2006 and that's oh, the last really? uh, big festival that she's ever gone to but we, we go yeah. see a lot of live music and the, the you know back to downtown Chicago some fantastic like theater venues the Vic um, Park West the Metro Schubers there's some really cool little venues down there uh, and, I, and I you know I, I would I prefer to see a band play a full set in a fairly small space where there's not a bad place. Oh, there. totally. There's sound and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we, we've been to the United Center and uh, what's the other one? Um, 
by the airport there, Allstate Arena. Uh, the single worst parking experience of my entire <laughs> life in that place, by the way, to the point where I'm like, we're never going to see a band, another band here again. Absolutely sucked. I'd uh, rather go back to the United Center, which is also a huge venue, but yeah. Well, anyways, bad, okay. So the Chance the Rapper band is called Surf. It was oh, prior okay. to that. Yeah, I, and it's, I am writing that down with a pen. It's so good. His friend, okay. he it's he and his his partner who plays the trumpet. So it's just, it's so cool, cool instrument. Wonderful. How, but what I was going to say is, you maybe you could come meet us for like a beer or something. Uh, I, that sounds fun. We'll be there okay, for four I'm days. Like, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the lineup right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some cool stuff going on. You know, Post Malone, a little, yeah. little bit of Posty. That's the last gig my wife, I actually gave tickets to my wife and my daughter to go see Post at um, United Center. And that was literally like two weeks before lockdown last year um you got post malone tyler the creator oh wow um the baby megan the stallion yeah um, that'll be fun but the ones that popped out to me i went they're still a band limp biscuit are playing wow <laughs> they're still out there I, I i'm like hey you know what and modest mouse is playing too they're really cool i just mm. kind of got a little deeper into modest mouse they're good um, some of their old stuff is awesome Brittany Howard's playing. She rocks. Yeah, Love she's Brittany. good. Brittany, awesome. Band of Horses, they're playing. That's more kind of my line. Um, Do you know that's Michael Foo Bridwell's Fighters brother? Big, big thing. Foo Fighters is the... Yep, they'll be fun. Oh, they'll be yeah. Fun. They Dave always, Grohl's always. awesome. Yeah, Do you guys want to hear a... Do you want to hear a funny story about Limp Bizkit? So I used sure. to be... Obs I used to be obsessed with them in high school. Like, you <laughs> okay. Know, it's very embarrassing. Um, and... Uh, my friends, my friend and I went to go see their concert, and we ran into Fred Durst on the, <laughs> on the street. And I didn't have anything for him to sign, like a CD or anything, so I had him sign my shoe. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought it was the coolest thing because they were those like old school Adidas rock stars, the red ones, you know, with the three stripes or whatever. And he had those shoes on the cover of his album, and oh. I was like, "It's like kismet." Oh wow, now. it's meant to but be. Then, but then he like turned into like Red Durst and <laughs> it was like, yeah, <laughs> but so now I'm not really a huge fan, but well, I, I don't know if I'm a fan at all anymore, but it was, it was a phase. <laughs> See, that's why I don't have any tattoos. Cause it would have been some band that I liked in high school that I don't like now. Oh my God. My friend did that with Deftones. Could you imagine oh, if you had a Limp Bizkit tattoo? Chicken, that's why, that's why <laughs> I don't have any tattoos. I'm just a big chicken. I'm like, Stab me a thousand times a second for a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's 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 not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So, Richard, um, you just got a promotion. Ooh, I did. What? It, what? G give us the the deets. I did. I got a vice president title, which is really nice acknowledgement. I've got a kick-ass team. That's oh, let's, awesome. Let's move um, up to the executive suite then. Who? Who? <laughs> Here we go. Me, uh, <laughs> I've been a senior director for a while. I came across uh, from Samsung to NEC as um, and uh, gave me a senior director title. I was director at Samsung for a long time, senior manager there. I was at Samsung for a long time. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. It was a shock. Um, I'd just done a kind of a real, I had a senior person on my team leave uh, that created some opportunities. So I did some reshuffling and new job descriptions and, and managed to get, um, um, folks on my team promoted and, and sort of recognized for the hard work they've done. Cause let's face nice. it, if you sort of survived the last 15 months, you probably worked your tail off. Right. Um, yes. and then, yeah, my boss called me about a week ago cause it was announced this week, but she called me about a week ago cause I, she knew I was going on vacation and she said, well, before you go, I want to tell you, blah, oh, blah, 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 so blah. Cool. So I was like, yeah, it was really cool. And, um, yeah, stoked, humbled all that. Good I stuff. Love it's good nice news. to get some recognition and okay. I'm not, you know, everybody got a little bit of imposter uh, syndrome going on in their world, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you work your tail off. Always. And, you know, <laughs> I've reversed I probably imposter syndrome. suck, but I'm not sure. And then it's nice for, you know, your boss and the company and the exact team to go, actually, no, you don't suck. <laughs> so that was all right. That's always a that good feeling. Really cool. Yeah. And yeah. I really appreciate that. You, you made an effort to, to raise up your team with you. And I, I think a lot of times, maybe it's an American culture thing or, or just a business culture thing, 
just we just give all the credit to the people at the top. And as the CEO of a smaller company, I know that it's it's you know ten percent me and ninety percent my team. Um, so the fact that you actually mentioned that, I appreciate that. I, I read a story. This this drives me crazy. A hospital that had you know a huge increase in business over the last year because of COVID. The the yeah. janitor who worked you know, extra hours because yeah. he was healthy and kept everything clean and everyone loved him. They gave him a $6 gift certificate. The CEO got a $30 million raise. Oh. So it just seems like, you know, yeah, I, I understand the CEO has a lot more weight on his or her shoulders. Six and a lot dollars? More. That doesn't even cover like the tip. <laughs> it, was, it was like a $6 sandwich coupon or something. And, and if, if, you know, if you can afford to give the CEO, and I understand it's, I understand the jobs aren't the same. You know, I understand there needs to be a difference. You can't pay everyone the same amount. I'm not a communist, but you got, you got it. You got it. Like, like you said, you know, an important part of it was, was lifting up your team with you. You have to do that. Yeah. And, uh, uh in England, um, that's where I'm from originally. So I'm still, I owe all my, my family are back there and obviously high school, college buddies and general buddies kind of thing. So I keep in touch. Um, and they were doing the because they've got a nationalized health system, uh, and obviously there was massive stress on that health system um, when COVID was blowing up and the several waves that they've had. And you know they were, I think, one of the first countries to sort of do a sort of clap for make a noise at eight o'clock every night for the healthcare workers, yeah. for the essential workers that do an enormous job and they put themselves in the front line. And it was all this, and I think we kind of did some of that over here too. Like we realized how important the janitor and the person who stocks the shelves and drives the trucks and moves the containers around were to the rest of the population's general life and well-being. And they did that and they did that. And then uh, I think three months ago, the because it's a national health system, so it's kind of run by the government, and they gave the nurses a 1% pay rise. <laughs> nice. It's like... I, I, yeah, you you guys are awesome. We yeah, you know, we more of us would be dead without you. Here's a one percent pay rise. It's it's literally the least right, they could do. Well. Yeah. <laughs> literally, oh literally, the least they could do. Yeah, yeah we're gonna do the least we can do. It's like teachers I, I, you know, too. I, so back to the sort of leadership thing. It, it's it's. I think one of the best skills you can have, and I, I I'm not rating myself in this, but. To be able to hire right and build a culture and build a country, a culture around sort of positivity and encouragement and not beratement, have people enjoy their jobs. They work better when they enjoy their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably somebody on my team watching this going, well, I didn't enjoy that bit, but whatever. <laughs> um, that, that, that's really key to being successful. Yeah, you can come in with all the high flying business degrees and you know, you've worked for McKinsey or some highfalutin company and they put you in charge and you're now the CEO. But to grow a team and, and to build a team, there's nothing more satisfying. Um, and that's, to be honest with you, that's the biggest part of my job and it's part of my job that I've, and definitely in the last 10 years, 15 years, that I've enjoyed the most is the work's the work. It's great. I've mm -hmm. been in technology all my career pretty much. Well, all my current career, let me put it like that. I've had a couple before, but um, that's all fine and dandy. And I know you guys, you know, David in particular, you're like very technically knowledgeable and all that. I don't really know that much about <laughs> how stuff works. Um, I can understand applications and why that's a cool thing, but I'm not a very technical person. So it's really about the human side of, of being, in the, being in a business that um, – allows you to encourage your team and help them grow. So this year was really cool to be able to kind of acknowledge that and get some bumps done. And, you know, we lost a senior, I said we lost a senior member on a team and she has gone on to bigger and better things. And that's also awesome as well. You know, I'm bummed that she's not with us anymore, but um, she's going to do great things where she's gone. Um, Jabra. And, uh, <laughs> oh, good company. That's good great. Company. That's great. It's great to see too. So, yeah. yeah, I love them. Yeah, it's a cool company. I know Kelly uh, Nagel pretty well. I worked with her at Ingram Micro a thousand years ago. No, she's going to hate me for saying that. Um, a while ago, we were both at Ingram Micro, which is kind of where I cut my teeth. And uh, it's great to see her leading that organization. 
about three or four years ago, they probably more so bad as out time. They acquired a camera company called Panacast. Very interesting, very oh, yeah, unique yeah. camera. And, yeah. and I think they're working on how to integrate it into bundles and kits and stuff. But I think the pandemic might have thrown everything off on that. But I'm, I'm very interested to see, you know, the, the final form of, of that technology, because, you know, this there is some innovation and differences in cameras. But for the most part, cameras are cameras. And that one was one of the few really, really different ones. So, um, yeah. you know, kudos yeah. for them for, for, for recognizing that it was cool, unique and buying it. And, and every time I talk to them, they're not like, oh, yeah, we're letting it sit on the shelf. They're, they, they are actively developing it, working with it. So it's pretty cool. Cool. So, I remember during, I got go one more thing on the leadership thing. Though. I remember mm. during COVID, um, I talked to Richard <clears throat> and it was so interesting. And what makes Richard so cool when it comes to this culture and leadership stuff is he's like, you know, how, like when you're during COVID and just working from home, we work like, I don't know, like 24 hours a day, right? Like we're working all the time. And he made a point of saying that, oh crap, I probably shouldn't email my team after hours because then they feel like they need to mm. respond after hours. And y you did make that point of like, I need to stop doing that because I don't want them to feel obligated to be working around the clock, which I thought was so cool that you even, that you even thought to mention it. You know what I mean? Like you get it, yeah, which is so I, I, cool. You know what? And I'm going to forget, I, I'm going to give the wrong kudos out, but I, somebody in our AV Tweets gang put something up about that. And he made the point to say, even if you're not expecting a response, you're, you know, potentially driving anxiety or stress or whatever yep. just by doing that. Because and I, I went, yeah, I'm just being a selfish schmuck because I'm <laughs> pinging that off to get it out of my inbox because and then i know i've done it and that's sort of you know okay that's good for me and i wasn't really thinking about even though i'm not expecting that person to respond because it's you know eight o'clock on a sunday night or 10 a.m on a saturday morning or whatever and i'm not a total i i do draw a line in the sand as far as looking at email and stuff like that but sometimes it happens and I wasn't really thinking about even if I'm not expecting because I'm the cool boss. I don't expect you to respond, right? Yeah, but you <laughs> sent me anyway, and it popped up in my notifications. I wasn't thinking from that far down. Um, you got to think a little bit. I need to rethink that because okay? you know my philosophy has always been: I've talked to my team about it, and my team knows we have an understanding. If I ping you over the weekend, it's just don't look at it till Monday. Right. But even right. though we have that understanding, I still might be put, putting some stress on them. You know, yeah. they're still, they're it's still interesting, it. isn't it? Like, yeah. I never, yeah. I never thought about it either. But it's, it's just cool that, yeah, I, it's neat. It's something that was raised that you don't really think about. Yeah, and and whatever the right answer is, just the fact that as a boss having the consideration to think about it and try to get it right is something that I think a lot of bosses wouldn't even it wouldn't even cross their radar to even think about. They'd be like. Who cares? If I have something to say, I'm saying it. I'm the boss. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You know, if they don't I like it, they can work for someone else. No. <laughs> How about, I think it might be time to go to the beach where Richard is. What do you mm -hmm. think? I think so. Let's, let's head to the beach. Oh, you're going to join me Friday. the beach now, right? It is Friday. Oh, <laughs> that's nicer. So we haven't talked displays yet. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. my guess is that uh, pre-pandemic displays were basically, it, it, the scene we were just looking at, the, the the premier rooms, the places where you needed display, the board rooms, the meeting rooms. And now we're saying that when we go back to the office, we're all going back three days a week, two days a week, half the team's going to be at home. I think we're, we're going to need displays on like every surface. I'm going to want to display in every room because any little meeting room, any little workspace, someone on the team's not there. We got to bring uh, them on a video. Are, are, are displays about to explode? So here's my... Uh opinion um so we you know people are talking about oh that's because of covid or that's because of the pandemic oh we're doing this differently now or we're using this tech now because of the pandemic uh, i'm gonna call bs on that but i am gonna say that what the pandemic did was accelerate some of the things that were already happening out there in the market from a user experience standpoint um you know we expect information to be delivered to us sometimes through these things right oh then how do i do that phone yeah um but if you think about you know shopping experiences or 
corporate experiences, higher ed experiences. There's, you know, you want to know that choir practice at 7 p.m. in the rec hall on Friday night. And these days you throw that up on a screen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what the pandemic did and this sort of now sort of this return made us reevaluate everything. Yeah, I, I think it's a good time to be in this market. I think it's a really good time to be in this market. And I also think whatever you thought were the applications two years ago still exist, mm -hmm. but there's way more now because we have to think about these different scenarios. Um, we just launched um, a collaboration with Avery um, called Active Scene. And it's a projector based technology. What it does is it utilizes glass. So it will turn a window, for want of a better term, uh, into a display screen. So what? if you think about retail, if, again, any kind of campus type, whether it's corporate campus, higher ed or whatever, how many windows there are, even internal windows down hallways, corridors. So now, We've got projector technology with our friends at Avery that enables that space to be used like a display. That is um, so cool. So what's yeah, on, on existing windows? Scene. You don't have to get a special Sorry, window? Again? You don't have to get a special, it works on existing nope, windows? No, nope, nope. existing, existing um, I gotta glass see that. is fine. Yeah, it's kind of cool. We've, we've had one set up, we've been doing proof of concept. So it's been a long proof of concept and that was because of the pandemic. We've been playing around with it. Um, in our in our corporate space so we've had like a couple of different setups there um and the first thought we had was oh this is like this is all about retail it's all about shopping malls mm. and, and all those kind of you know it's the store within the store kind of space where you've got the glass there um but the applications now we, you know we are talking to some universities and some big corporate environments um Anywhere where you've got glass, there are some limitations with ambient light environments and all that other. See, now I'm heading down this kind of techie stuff and I'm going to get caught out in a question or something I won't know the answer to. <laughs> and I go, we've got really smart people at Sharp, any C display <laughs> solutions that can help you out with that. I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 cool. And, and that's just an example, right, of how the sort of display applications that we all are kind of used to. Yeah, the corporate boardrooms and all that. Yeah, your boardroom is pretty cool. I like your boardroom set up when you guys do that. Um, <laughs> we have one that looks like that in our office. <laughs> oh, nice. uh, doesn't have the cats in the corner, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, this proliferation, so it's a good time to be in this space, right? It's a great time to be in this space. Well, I'm just, I'm just, my mind is reeling over this, this glass idea that it feels like there's so many applications. I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm picturing myself walking into a, um, you know, to a shirt store and going up to a glass and seeing myself wearing different shirts. So not having to try them on. Yep. Oh, that would be, would be awesome. Yeah, I hate yep. wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, and that's just, I mean, that's just the first thing that comes just to mind. Buy three it's different sizes and one of them will fit and then you send the other two back. No, that's not good for the planet, but yeah, I may I, or may not have done that in the past. I, with Amazon, you you can do that so easy. I feel guilty. I just send me all the stuff and you just send it all back. Yeah, especially because, yeah. um, like, what does XL mean or L or M? <laughs> yeah. David, it's probably an M. I have, M, M, is, M is too small and L is too big. You gotta okay. get a Marge. Oh, that's a what Marge. I need. I need a Marge. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, that's brilliant. A Ledium. I yes, need a I need exactly. a Ledium t shirt. Yeah. I like standards, right? So it's like you have no idea. Yes. I uh, yeah, you, so... could, you could definitely do that kind of application uh, in a retail setting. Uh, I mean, think about it. you combine that with AR and Right. So right. when is this coming out? Uh, we just launched. We just oh, launched it. So yeah. it's so we can find skewed, information on it. Skewed up as a solution set at your local distributor. No kidding. Or distributor, depending on where you're from. <laughs> Either one works. Either one of those would be fine. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, I definitely I definitely want to demo of that at, at some point. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Get some videos on YouTube. I'll I'll share them around. <laughs> Are you showing oh. it at Infocom? Oh hell, yeah. <laughs> Sweet, that'll be my number one stop. <laughs> we'll stop there, there first. We'll, we'll show you active scene. On the way to the bar. 
<laughs> the way the bar. <laughs> if there's a bar, Kelly can find it. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we did we did an announcement at Infocom uh, a couple of years ago, and I, it was partner related. So it's really sad that I can't think exactly what it was. But we ended up ordering like seventy five bottles of champagne, and everybody had champagne. And we did this thing at like three thirty in the afternoon. And I remember saying to my boss, "Say we just need a, to invent something. We need to talk about at three o'clock in the afternoon where we all start drinks, sat around <laughs> the uh, the booth drinking champagne. This is way in. Cool. Count me in." <laughs> Who was the speaker? Was it? I can't remember the name of the speaker company that always used to have like um, like a real ale bar in their booth, which was very popular. Speaker ah. Craft, is that one of those guys? Am I remembering that right? I don't know. Lots of guys with hairstyles like mine, but with full beards. <laughs> Pexip always, you know, one of, one of my uh, L- Lesson Video sponsors, Pexip, they always have a, a, a drinking party at the booth and they're Norwegian. So they know how to drink and they have this ah. special bottle of magic Norwegian liquor, liquor that they give you a shot of. And it's like, oh, wow, I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you find out that the Northern Lights is really just a myth and they're all just hallucinated <laughs> up there. Norwegians, they, they know good liquor and they know video conferencing. It's, it's, it's strange how much of the video conferencing DNA goes back to that old company, Tamberg, that used to exist in Norway. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they are ex Tamburg people. Yeah. Huh. There's, yeah. There's ex Tamburg people. Yeah, and a lot of uh, Pexip is ex Tamburg people. Uh, what's that? Neat is ex Tamburg people. Cisco has a bunch of ex Tamburg people still because they bought Tamburg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, there's a lot of them spread out throughout the uh, industry. If you see someone tall, good looking, with a slight Norwegian accent, at Infocom, odds are they used to work at Tamburg and they're really good at video conferencing. <laughs> and they like weird alcohol. Beautiful country. I say that beer is expensive there, though. I think it's one of those countries where you find most things are more expensive than you're, you're expecting. Like, I remember a friend um, went to visit there, and she said a beer, like, the equivalent was, like, a, like $9. Oh, wow. Although, I guess that's kind of the case in England, too, depending on the year. <laughs> well, so, okay, so if you do the tourist thing, and you go, uh, you go to London for a long weekend or a week or whatever, and you don't get out of London, that's like, that's like going to Manhattan and thinking everything is uh, priced mm. Got it. You got to get out a little bit. Stretch them legs. <laughs> get out of town. No, I love London. Don't get me wrong. It's a great town. I did, but, uh, uh, I did the England thing once with my family back, back in the day. And we did a lot of London, but I, where I really remembered I loved was uh, Bath. The, oh, Bath is beautiful, oh, right? Yeah. God, so yeah. Beautiful. It's, you got yeah. a driveway, it's way out. College there, it's gorgeous. Oh, so beautiful. It, they, I never went. It's this it, this old England town, like, you know, way, way out of of of, um, of London, but it's called Bath because there used to be Roman baths there when the Romans were there. And they still oh, have cool. the ruins and stuff. Yeah. So you could see it's like, it's like a, yeah. a Roman spa, jacuzzi, hot tub yeah. place. It's so cool. <laughs> so yeah, cool. With That's London. awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I studied so abroad in London when I was 20 years old. And I had no money. And I just remember the beer being so expensive. <laughs> I saved all my money for alcohol and I ate peanut butter sandwiches <laughs> for like every meal. <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> that was a thing. That happened. I don't doubt that. Anyways. Well, is there anything more we can help? Um, you know, we appreciate you being here and, and this is an yeah, opportunity, thank you. you know, promote your company, pitch your products. Um, you know, a lot of times on, on talk shows, they say, this isn't about pitching your product. This is about this. No, this is about pitching your product. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> Go for it. You know, where, where can people find you? Uh, what, what makes you the best me, of all your competitors? It's super easy. Um, I'm on all the socials apart from what happened last week when somebody said oh it's on my instagram feed and i went oh i don't do instagram i just got confused when i went to instagram and went what is this everybody's on facebook is on instagram and it's more photos and uh i just did the old guy thing i went ah me too me too and i feel bad because i consider myself good at social media but i looked at instagram i'm like i don't get it yeah i I, I love everyone's on it it's huge it's it's very large. Huge. Okay, I, I, I went through a thought process of, I don't get it. And my second thought was, I don't want to get it either. <laughs> I'm fine. 
I'm fine. Fair uh, so enough. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, and uh, you can get to anybody at Sharp Any Serious Space Solutions through me. I'll put you in touch with the right people that are way smarter than me if you want to talk about active scene or um, the other thing that's just super hot right now. And again, I think the pandemic kind of accelerated it is um, DVLED. Uh, we bought a DVLED manufacturer three or four years ago. Um, and that's a big part of our portfolio. We put a lot of resources in. I mean, we were even hiring last year to put more resources into the support, the design, the installation. Um, I, I also, you know, from a side note on where folks have maybe struggled out in the integration channel a little bit is, and what we're finding is we're getting asked more to do the initial install, which we can totally do um, because some companies sort of had to, you know, make some cuts here and there. And that was one of the areas that they sort of cut out of their services. I know there's, if you go to hiring boards, it's crazy. If you're any kind of installer prep work person right now, you can probably command a, a nice chunk of change because the demand out there is super high. So DVLED is super hot. We're doing a ton of projects. Um, it's a very hands-on approach. Um, you know, we work with the partner. We will work to um, sometimes certify the partner. If this, if this is a, a business they're committed to being a part and they want to do more of it, we'll do the first uh, install with them and we'll use that as like a training thing. Mm. Um, and we've got a really, really nice team um, of folks out there that, that literally travel the country and, and do that uh, and make that happen. Um, for the folks that this is, you know, a, maybe a one-off request um, and it's not really going to be part of their portfolio, um, but they obviously have got a good client that they're working with and they've been asked about it. We have some really cool kits. I think uh, one of the things that stands us out from the crowd is we took the sort of video wall market and went, look, most, you know, 90% of these sales are gigantic 16 by nine walls. So let's make some kits of some common sizes. And those kits aren't just, we'll sell you nine displays at a time. It's the power control, it's the UPS, it's the cabling, it's the mounts. It, it's pretty much everything you need. And they're sold as kits. So it's sort of a one unit thing, That's cool. um, which makes, makes it, it easier. super easy. And we've got some redundancy built into that because you often have to have like redundant power supplies as an example, right? Um, as backup, we'll do hot swappable displays. So we kind of built these kits. So when we when we went into the DVLED universe, again, same thing, right? Yes, there's these fantastically curved, wrapped around, weird shaped LED installations out there that are super cool to see, and I get excited by them, and and they're awesome. But as a percentage of the installations, it's probably like you know less than ten percent. So again, we've got this, these kind of different sizes from about 110 inches all the way up to, I think, 200 inches. I can hear my boss going, you should know that by now, <laughs> um, about 200 inches and then different pixel pitches. Cause depending on, you know, where the person is going to be, where your audience yep. is going to be in, in distance wise. And I think this is also a bit of a gotcha just to go down a little tandem with that, mm -hmm. that people want the tightest pixel density they can get we can do that you're going to pay for it right when push comes to shove when you're standing there about 10 feet plus from the screen you can't really tell yeah. right you can't really tell um so just some options so we have all these kits with different pixel densities and then different sizes um and we kit those up as, as again single skews as well um, and we did that with the DVLED lineup. So, you know, again, we've got spare parts and all that as part of the kit. So, um, and you guys and we, have them in stock. We really stand behind our warranty, right? I think that's the other thing where I've worked with companies in the past that were predominantly consumer companies, and there is a different type of support and uh, warranty that those kind of companies have. It's very hard to replicate that in a B2B environment when people are spending tens of thousands of dollars on a solution, they expect a different level of support and right. frankly should get a different level of support than, you know, your aunt Mary whose printer is broken because she can, she can't, you know, 
print yeah. the church services. I'm spending six right figures now. on a video wall. I, I want a little help. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, exactly. And and that's where I think where our value really comes in to play is I think we really do a good job with support. We hear about it from clients. Um, it's why we get repeat clients. It's why we can often sell things at higher pricing, which our integrator friends like too. Um, yeah, on paper, that line item is, is, is cheaper, but over the life of the product, over the life of your project, having that um, security and, and backup from a manufacturer like Sharp NEC is, is, is really cool. And we have a, wow, I nearly dropped the F-bomb then. We have a really good <laughs> set of chat partners out there. That's probably not how you need to pitch your company, right? <laughs> well, it shows you're passionate weird. about it. Yeah, uh, uh, Kelly brings cool. up a good point. Um, Everyone we've had on a guest of this show in, in almost any industry has said that the chip shortage it has been affecting them. And these displays, they're not the dumb old displays from when we were kids. These are really smart. Yeah. They got chips in them. So yeah. I'm wondering, is uh, are the chips in your displays the kind of chips that we're talking about? Is it affecting your availability? Do you, what Kelly was saying, do you have them on the shelf? And is it affecting pricing? Um uh yes yes and yes oh boy oh no remember those three questions <laughs> yeah with that supply chain is like we're in this weird like Everyone. like some of the biggest demand wave we've seen um i was on the phone with a large integrator out of southern california last week um i've known the guy for a long time and he said this is the biggest wave of demand i've seen in 25 years in the industry wow. they just you know it's so hard to keep up right now at the same time because of the downturn in demand and then the massive increase in demand from a component supply chain uh, standpoint, it's really hard. And, and, and costs, you know, you notice it in everything. Um, costs are going up. A, a couple of examples. Shipping right now, right? Global shipments. Container pricing to ship a container now is three times the price it was 18 months ago. Three wow. times the price. I didn't just know learned, that. Just learned yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, also, getting if you can get your stuff on a container and get it booked and shipped, getting it into the port has become problematic. There is this massive backup of um, components and finished goods coming into the country from uh, overseas. And just heard yesterday that each container is now getting charged an extra $1,000 uh, what do they, it made me laugh when they said it's called a port congestion surcharge. <laughs> port congestion went, surcharge. because we can charge you an extra thousand dollars. I was going to say, it sounds, like a, an extra it sounds like bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it just sounds like a, because we can charge. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So supply chain is, is massive right now. And I think uh, we're, we're not the only ones that have, um, you know, are going through this. Um, there are some... Okay, somebody's going to hate me down the road by saying this. I think we're over the worst of it. I think the next couple of months are going to be a little rocky. And it, and I'll say it really depends on what you're wanting. So, you know, mm -hmm. number one size from a unit standpoint, at least is 55 inch in our space, right? That's kind of the perfect digital signage size kind of display. Um, Availability on those is kind of spotty right now, um, but slightly smaller, 50 inch, slightly larger, 65 inch. Uh, we shouldn't have a problem. Now, if you're out there and you want to place an order for like 300 units of a 65 inch widget tomorrow and expect it on Monday, we might have to have a conversation. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's it, so and, it, and it's changing. Um, daily sometimes if not weekly we are and so the approach we've taken is uh be up front with the client right don't go yeah we should have it you can't say that today right because you either know you can you've got it or you don't mm -hmm. um get ahead of the demand signal so the earlier we know about an opportunity and a project um, the better it is for everybody and we are better able to commit to delivery times and all that kind of stuff. And we have awesome, I said we had an awesome integration channel. A big part of that integration channel is frankly the distributors, right? We work very, very closely on supply chain with our distribution partners. Um, and, you know, they, they've been all to a T in the last 15 months, even more engagement before 
on things around supply chain. At the offset, it was, hey, we've got a lot of inventory and our demand has dropped off. What can we, how can we work together to, to mm. alleviate that? And then now it's, we've got way more demand than, um, you know, the manufacturers can deal with. How do we work through that? So all the way through our supply chain, and supply chain is a very technical term, by the way, um, we're, we're very open with the communication. So um, from, the, from the end client through the integrator to the distributor, uh, there's a ton of conversation taking place. As I'm happily spending my time with you, I'm sure my colleagues um, that work in the distribution channel, integration channel, and for our major end users are, are talking with them about projects and availability and delivery dates and getting engineers on, out there. Uh, again, going back to sort of the human labor shortage issue, that can also be, it's one thing to hit the hardware there, but if there ain't nobody there, I kind of wire it up and do the content and get it looking all good. It's just a pile of boxes in the back back room, right? So yeah, it doesn't yeah. do much good. Yeah. So it's really for us. I, I've always thought the key and that what made what made Sharp NEC attractive for me to come to was was the sort of human approach they take to the market, and it, it felt less robotic and it felt less. Um, it, it was it, it with truly a B two B brand to our core, and we take that very seriously. So. My gosh, I really just want to buy fun, NAC man. after this. <laughs> hey, man, POs. I'll take POs all day, every day. <laughs> that you can, if you want to email me a purchase order over the weekend, that's not a problem. I'll probably respond to that email. <laughs> well, Don't these, copy your employees. <laughs> I have these glass windows in front of me. I'm thinking maybe I can turn them into a big screen projector. <laughs> hey, man, let's talk. Get Displays the, you know, everywhere. Can I put the Star <laughs> Wars movie up on it, The Mandalorian or something? Yes, that would be amazing. <laughs> Great. So any any other questions for us uh, this week, Kelly? I think we should I come back so. and we talk about road tripping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love your your road trips. I think it's so cool. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll have to have you back after uh, Kelly visits you for Lollapalooza so we can hear all the <laughs> stories. <laughs> yes. You don't have to come to the show, Richard, but we should definitely meet up for a beer or something. I like that. Let's do it. Cool. All right. Thank we'll, you for we'll coming be, on. I'll be sure to see you That's at the booth at Infocom. Yes. October. All right. Are you ready for our final thoughts, Miss Kelly? I am. I am. Let's do this. Zooming in from space to the smartest, most intelligent, wisest place on the entire planet. Wisdom oh, Mountain. Make me blush. All and right. There she so is, Guru Kelly. Today, my, my deep thought slash weird fact is um, I've discovered that pandas, you know, panda bears, which um, they poop most of what they eat <laughs> because their diet consists entirely of bamboo, uh, which is very hard to digest. They poop four fifths of what they eat. <laughs> You're not a spot to that. <laughs> I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, for coming. And um, we'll see you next week. See you next week, everyone. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Richard. <laughs>